the day after my life. The volume The Striped Pajamas by John Boyne. Brunel, the nine-year-old boy from Berlin, returns home from school one day and discovers his maid Marie packing a bag with his things. His mother explains that because of his father's work, they have to move. Bruno is not quite sure what his father's job is, but from what he understands, a man knows the Fuhrer has plans for his father's career. His mother informs him that he should say goodbye to his friends from school called Daniel and Martin. Bruno does not like this and says that he will miss his house and his grandparents who live nearby. When he goes to help Rory pack the suitcase, he looks at the door of his father's office, where he is forbidden to enter under any circumstances and without exceptions. Upon arriving at his new home, Reno cannot help comparing it to his Berlin home, which is big and has many places to hide. The new house gave him the feeling that no one was laughing there. They had three new servants in Pavel, an old man who prepared dinner for them. They were all very thin and spoke to each other in whispers. Reno informs his mother that he thinks it was a bad idea to move to that place, and encourages her to tell her father that they have changed their minds and that the next day they will return to Berlin. But this only angers her. Before helping Marie unpack, Lieutenant Kugler appears at their door, and Bruno has a bad feeling about him. As he looks out his bedroom window, he sees something chilling. Bruno is afraid of his older sister Gretel, because she and her friends make fun of him for being the smallest boy in his class. He enters his sister's room and discovers her organizing her dolls. She tells him that she has brought them, because her father told her that they would be in their new home in the near future. But neither of them understands the phrase well. They both agree that the new life situation is bad, and she explains that the place where they're called is Auschwitz. But Bruno doesn't understand immediately why the place is called like that. Then he tells his sister that the children are not very friendly to him. And when she asks what children do you mean, Bruno takes her to his room to look outside his window. From Bruno's window they can see old people and children living together. And Gretel wonders where the women are. The chain link fence can also be seen, but on the other side there is no vegetation. Gretel says this is a field. But Bruno doesn't agree, because if it was a field there would be animals, and it seems that there aren't. That said they can see that the men and the children are standing. Then we're working, and others intimidated by a group of soldiers. Gretel wonders why they have moved to such an ugly place, with many neighbors. And she leaves the room, saying that the view from her window is much better. Bruno continues looking, and sees that everyone is wearing gray striped pajamas with a cap. Bruno approaches his father's office, and hears him speak to other men, assuring them that they will have a fresh start with him as leader. He enters when his father tells him to come in, when he asks if he likes the new house. Bruno honestly answers no, and asks him when they will return to Berlin, and his father tells him that they have no choice, that's his new home. Bruno asks him if he has done something to anger the Fuhrer, and if the move is a punishment, but his father replies that it is quite the opposite. Before leaving, Bruno asks about the people outside, and his father tells him not to worry because he has nothing in common with them. His father reminds him to salute as he leaves, and Bruno raises his arm and says goodbye with Hail Hitler. Days later, Bruno was looking at the cracks in the ceiling when Marie entered the room. He tries to get her to admit that Auschwitz is a bad sight, and without thinking, he says, A stupid father. This surprises Marie and tells Bruno that his father is a good man, that helped her find a job after her mother died. Gretel interrupts them and orders Maria to bake her. Bruno tells Maria that Gretel can do it alone, but still Maria obeys. When Gretel comes out, Bruno says again that their father has made a mistake taking them to this place. And Marie asks him to shut up because he could get them into trouble. Bruno leaves the house crying, but Will begins to get bored with the passing of the weeks. Though he decides to build a swim. As he goes out, he finds Gretel talking to Lieutenant Kogler and asks for a tire. The Lieutenant and Gretel laugh at him. But when he explains it's for a swing, the Lieutenant yells at Pavel and orders him to retrieve a tire from the warehouse. Bruno builds the swing and yoke outside the house. A few hours later, he falls and seriously hurts his knee. Pavel saw how everything happened from the kitchen and went out to help him. When Bruno's mother returned, he went back to his place, and Bruno heard his mother tell him that, if the commander asks, she healed Bruno's wounds. Who Bruno missed the most was his grandparents. His grandfather had been a restaurant manager, and his grandmother was a famous singer. They put on plays and let him and Gretel participate. The last one was on Christmas Day. After his father had been promoted to commander, the play ended in a discussion. Their men did not approve of his father's new uniform, and at dinner she told him that she was very embarrassed that he dressed like this. The mother tried to calm her, but this only angered her much more, telling him that it made her want to tear out her eyes when she saw the uniform. 
Grandma left the house furious and Bruno never saw her again. Though he decided to write her a letter. Bruno spends more time in Auschwitz, and his father hires a tutor for him and Gretel, named Herr List. Focused on history and geography, he insists Bruno learn about the homeland. But Bruno is not interested. He also tells him that his creative mind has caused him much trouble. Bruno feels the need to go exploring after looking out the window of the people on the other side of the fence. Sometimes he sees the soldiers on that side, but he has never seen the people in the striped pajamas on his side. Though he decides to go for a walk along the fence. Although his parents have told him countless times that exploring is prohibited, Bruno walks for an hour without seeing anyone on the other side, but just when he thought about going back, he sees a person in the distance. The person is a boy and when approaching, Bruno realizes that he is very thin and seems sad. He is wearing striped pajamas and has a very strange star on his arm that he has never seen before. They both talk and Bruno discovers that the other boy is called Jamil. Although he had never heard that name before, they discover that they are the same age and that they were born on the same day. Jamil tells him that he is from Poland and reveals that they are not in Germany but in Poland. Bruno tells him about Berlin and tells him that he probably comes from a better place. Months before moving from Berlin, one night Bruno's father had announced to the family that the Führer would come to the house for dinner. His mother cleaned every corner of the house, and his father prepared him in riddle, telling them that that night was very important to his career. The Führer arrived accompanied by a blonde woman named Eva. Bruno remembers that the Führer was the rudest fist he had ever seen. Instead, Eva had been kind to him, and he had smiled at them before their father closed the dining room door. Once they left, Bruno heard his parents talk about leaving Berlin, and a few days later they had moved. Bruno and Schmuel continued talking on the fence. And Bruno asks why there are so many people on the other side. Bruno tells him that they used to live with his family, and that one day his mother braced them with the Star of David. They had to move with the family to a very small room, because they were on the wrong side of a wall that had been built. Bruno tells him that one day the soldiers entered. They made them wrap their things, and put them in huge trucks where they were taken to a train where there was no one to breathe. When they came down they had to walk to Auschwitz. And Bruno does not understand why well, he was so sad if the same thing had happened to them. Bruno asks if there are more boys on his side of the fence. Shmuel says yes, to which he complains that it's not fair that he doesn't have anyone to play with. But Shmuel tells him they don't play, and this surprises him. He suggests that he could pass under the fence to visit his friends. But Shmuel nervously tells him he'd better go home. Bruno promises to return the next day. One day Maria finds Bruno taking bread, and she's to take to Shmuel and he convinces her to tell him about Pavel's life as a doctor. When he meets Shmuel, he tells him that he wants to be a good soldier like his father. But Shmuel tells him that there are no good soldiers, and he doesn't know how things are in there. Bruno arrives home and discovers that Luden and Kober will stay for dinner. At the table, Kober tells the family that his father was a university professor, but that he left Germany to go to Switzerland. And this disturbs Bruno's father. At that moment, Pavel opens a bottle of wine and accidentally drops it on Kobler, who reacts violently with Pavel. One day it was raining so much that Bruno couldn't leave the house. Gretel entered his room and he accidentally mentioned Shmuel. But he covers up his mistake, saying he is an imaginary friend. Gretel believes his lie and mocks him. Bruno tells her what Shmuel told him, that his grandmother had disappeared, and that every time he asked his father he would cry and hug him. Gretel tells him to stop talking to his imaginary friend, but Bruno says he doesn't want to. When she leaves, he stays in his room looking at the rain through the window and wondering about Shmuel. One day Bruno meets Lieutenant Kobler in the hallway, with his house making fun of him. At that moment his mother passes by, and sends him to the kitchen, where he finds Shmuel polishing the glasses, for his father's birthday party. Bruno helped himself to some chicken from the fridge, and when he saw Shmuel's face he offered him some. But when the lieutenant entered the kitchen, he accuses Shmuel of stealing food, though he tries to tell him that Bruno gave it to him. But Bruno tells Kobler he doesn't know him. Bruno doesn't see Shmuel again, for a week. And the day he does, he sees that his face is full of wounds. Bruno apologizes to Shmuel for betraying him, and that to shake hands between the fence. Almost a year after the family moved, they received the news of his grandmother's death, and they returned to Berlin for the funeral. Bruno realizes that he misses his life at Auschwitz, and it makes him happy to think that Kodo was transferred away from there. And his friendship with Shmuel makes him wonder more and more why they are on opposite sides of the fence. Bruno explains that those who live on the other side are Jews, and the fence is there to prevent them from going out and mixing with others. 
Bruno asks what they are, if they are not Jewish, and she replies that they are the opposite. Then it is discovered that he and Bruno have lice. Then after washing their hair with a special shampoo, his father insists on shaving Bruno's head. One day Bruno hears his mother tell his father that she wants to return to Berlin with him and Gretel. He worries about his mother's health when he sees her taking many naps in medicine. His father gathers him and Gretel and asks if they miss Berlin, to which Gretel says yes. But Bruno doubts it when he thinks of Schmuel. Their father tells them Auschwitz is not a place for children, but Bruno tells him that there are hundreds of children on the other side of the fence. His father is surprised that Bruno knows this information and makes the decision to return them to Berlin that week. Bruno gets nervous when he thinks about telling Shmuel the news. Three days later, Bruno meets Shmuel again and realizes that the boy is even sadder. When asked if Shmuel tells him that his father has disappeared, Bruno suggests asking his own father what has happened, but Shmuel replies that it is not a good idea because the soldiers hate him and the other people on his side of the fence. Bruno tells him that he will return to Berlin, and Shmuel gets sad because he won't have anyone to talk to anymore. When Bruno tells him that tomorrow will be the last time they meet, Shmuel tells him that he should cross the fence. Bruno remembers that his father shaked his head, and he tells Shmuel that if he brings some striped pajamas, he can cross the fence and help him find his father. The next day it starts to rain, and Bruno puts on a raincoat and boots to go see Shmuel, who gives him the dirty striped pajamas. Bruno wears it and remembers the plays he used to do with his grandmother. Shmuel also makes him take off his boots, and Bruno slides to the other side of the fence. But the camp is very different from what Bruno imagined. All the people are very thin and with sad expressions. What Bruno doesn't realize is that the soldiers seem to be having a good time while the people in striped pajamas are afraid of them. He tells Shmuel that he wants to go home, but the other responds that he had promised to look for his father. In an instant they are surrounded by soldiers, who direct them to a warm room. Bruno worries that he has to go home before dinner, but Shmuel shuts him up saying that if he doesn't, the soldiers will get mad. The children hold hands and Bruno assures Shmuel that he is his best friend in life. The room darkens and they continue hand in hand. Soldiers search for Bruno for days, until they finally find the remains of his clothes on the fence. The father goes to the site without understanding what may have happened. The mother thinks that maybe Bruno returned to Berlin and rushes back with Gretel but they can't find him there. Angry at the Auschwitz soldiers, the father returns to the place where his son's clothes were found. He notices the hole in the fence. In an instant he understands what happened to Bruno. Months later he is fired from his post, and the soldiers remove him from the field. Have you read the boy in the striped pajamas? Remember to like this video, and subscribe for more summaries. Until the next video.